We will now take a closer look into the horizontal force transmission of tires. In this lecture, we are looking into the longitudinal tire forces that are required for accelerating or braking a vehicle. We again use a simple physical substitute model to describe the mechanisms that enable the force transmission from the wheel to the road. This substitute model is commonly known as the Prush tire model. To reduce the complexity and gain basic understanding of the fundamental mechanical principles, we simplify by making the following assumptions. First, we assume that the tire's carcass is a rigid structure. On this rigid structure, flexible elements that describe the tire tread are mounted at point P0. These elements are called brushes or bristles. They are flexible and have a certain stiffness. These brushes can only deform in the wheel plane, but not in the radial direction. Note that since the carcass is assumed to be rigid, the deformation of the brush in this model accounts for the overall deformations. So, locally in the contact, it represents the deformation of the real carcass and the tread together. As we have seen in a previous lecture, when a tire is pressed against the road, this results in a certain pressure distribution in the contact wedge. To further simplify, we assume the pressure distribution to be uniform, both in longitudinal direction of the contact wedge, with L being 2 times A, and in lateral direction, along the width W. For now, note that for the longitudinal direction of the contact wedge, a uniform pressure distribution is a strong simplification. Next, we only focus on the longitudinal direction by using the pressure distribution Qz per unit thickness from point A, where an element enters the contact patch, to point minus A, where it leaves. As a result, we can calculate the vertical tire force Fz, or load acting on the tire, by integrating the constant pressure distribution over the contact patch length from minus A to A. Then the vertical force Fz results in pressure distribution Qz times 2A. Now let's see what happens with the brushes. When the brush element enters the contact patch, it is perpendicular at this first instant and the point P0 is exactly above P. When a wheel is driven or braked, longitudinal slip is present and the brush elements deform in longitudinal direction. As a result, the points P and P0 follow different trajectories in longitudinal direction when passing the contact patch. P0 is bound to the rigid carcass while P sticks to the ground. The resulting deformation of the elastic brush element is responsible for the tire road contact forces. At the last point before exit, the deformation has its highest value. After the exit, the element jumps back to the undeformed state, pointing radially away from the carcass. In this state, it does not transmit force to the road. As a result, we will only consider those conditions when the brush element is in contact with the road. The brush elements are treated as elastic springs. Its stiffness in longitudinal direction per unit width is given with the value Cp. The deformation of the brush element can be seen on the right side in its side and top view. The reason for the deformation of the elastic brush is that the top point P0 of the brush element has a different velocity than the bottom point P of this brush element. The relative speed between the upper and the lower point of the brush element is the sliding speed Vsx. It is the difference of the longitudinal velocity Vx and the rotational speed omega times the effective tire radius Re. For point P of the brush element, the Coulomb friction model holds and we assume the static friction limit to be mu s. When the deformation stress of point P of the brush element is smaller or equal to the maximum shear stress limited by the static friction, point P will stick to the road 
and we have the case of pure adhesion. When the deformation stress is higher than the maximum shear stress, limited by the static friction, point P slides through the contact patch with a constant deformation. The maximum shear stress tau max is given by the static coefficient of friction mu s and the pressure distribution qz in the contact patch. As a reminder, we assumed that pressure distribution to be uniform over the whole contact patch length. When the local shear stress is lower than tau max, the lower point P of the brush element sticks to the ground and we can assume that we have pure adhesive contact in point P. When the local shear stress tau is higher than tau max, slippage occurs in the point P. For a brush element passing through the contact patch, this condition can change. Let us take a look into that in detail. As mentioned before, when it first enters the contact patch, the brush element is perpendicular to both the carcass and the road. During free rolling and without longitudinal slip, the sliding velocity Vsx in the contact patch is zero. The top point and the lower point of the brush element have the same speed and the element is not deformed. When the wheel is either driven or braked, this is different. The further the brush element passes through the contact patch, the higher it is deformed. There is a relative speed between the top of the brush element, which is mounted to the rigid carcass, and its bottom, which is in contact to the road. On the upper right side, we see the deformation of the brush element during braking. The relative speed between the upper and the lower point of the brush element is the sliding speed Vsx. When braking, the point P0 is before the contact point P in the direction of travel. On the lower right side, the deformation and sliding velocity is shown for a driven wheel. On a driven wheel, point P0 is behind point B in direction of travel. We use the theoretical slip definition that was given in one of the prior lectures. Therein, we use the ratio between the sliding velocity and the tangential velocity, which results from the rotational velocity of the wheel. Finally, this results in sigma x being omega times Re minus Vx, divided by omega times Re. The lower point of the brush element sticks to the ground and moves towards the rear part of the contact patch. The longitudinal deformation u of the brush element depends on its current position x in the contact patch and is proportional to the longitudinal slip. The deformation u results in minus parenthesis of a minus x times sigma x. Finally, the longitudinal stress tau is given by brush element stiffness cp times the longitudinal deformation u. We have now looked in detail at how the brush elements are deflected in contact with the road throughout the contact patch for braking and driving. In addition, we looked into the different speeds of the brush element in its upper point and its lower point. The aim of the brush tire model is to establish a relationship for the longitudinal force of the tire depending on the current longitudinal slip sigma x at the wheel. In order to calculate the longitudinal force, in the next step we look at the adhesive contact of the brush elements with the road. That's it for now. We will continue in a second part.